Hello, my name is Jesper Jorgsson. I'm currently working at the Helmut Centrum in Berlin. And the topic for today's talk is how to create a better data management system in the perovskite field and what we can accomplish if we do that. We are all familiar with what we call the standard research cycle in experimental materials research, which goes something like this. Read papers and based on those and our own past experience generate ideas and hypotheses. We then go into the lab where we do some stuff and generate some formal data from which we ideally can draw interesting conclusions worth presenting in a paper. We then start all over again in a never ending cycle. This obviously works reasonably well given how science and technology have progressed in the last few centuries. But with that said, it's not a model without flaws. And one of those is how to keep up with expanding literature and how to keep track of what has already been done, and maybe what should be done, but not yet has been done. And in the field of perovskite, this is a very real problem. And if you search for perovskite solar in web of science, you get more than 16,000 hits. All of those are not perovskite papers, but most are. It's incredibly hard to keep up to date. And if you're new to the field, it's essentially impossible to catch up. And this will have consequences for how efficiently we can do perovskite research. A potential solution to that specific problem would be to have all perovskite data in one place, which happens to be the goal of the perovskite database project, where our idea is to expand the standard research cycle with an open database where we could collect all perovskite device data ever generated and connect this with simple and interactive searching, filtering and visualization. And we believe that this is something that you can generate entirely new insights, simplify literature research, help us design better experiments and thereby accelerate the pace of discovery. And what I hope to accomplish here today by showing a few examples is to convince you that this is a good idea and something you would like to be a part of. First, I need to say a few words about the data, um, like specifying what data I am talking about. Uh, ideally, we like to have everything, but we also have to start somewhere. And in the initial project, we have limited ourselves to device data, device metadata, and key performance metrics. And those parameters could be divided as shown in the figure here. We have reference information, we have a cell definition, like what are the cell architecture, how big is it, is it semi-transparent, is it flexible, is it a module, and so on. Then we have the device stack, where we have all the functional layers in the stack, like the whole transport layers, the perovskite, the conductors, and so on. And for each of those layers, we want to know properties like the composition, the dimensionality, the band gap, the thickness, and so on. And for each of those layers, we want to know the synthetic details, where we want to know the chemicals, the solvents, the dopants involved. We want to know the deposition procedures and the deposition conditions. And then finally, we have key metrics in terms of the IV metrics, QE metrics, stability, and outdoor testing. So all in all, we have in the initial data hand search for about 100 parameters per device, but we have also developed protocols intended for future use. We capture up to 400 parameters per device. So we have more than 16,000 perovskite papers, multiple devices per papers, and 100 parameters per device. So now you may start to think that this sounds like a lot of work, and how did we actually get all that data? And indeed, it has been a huge amount of work to get the data. But the answer has been by the help of volunteers. And I have simply asked everyone I know and have worked with before to see if they would be willing to help me in doing this. And the response has been overwhelmingly positive. So I've been able to gather a team of around 90 persons around the globe that have helped me going through the data. And before I continue, I would like to acknowledge all the co workers. Without those, this project wouldn't have been possible. And I would also like to acknowledge the funding, which is a European project, to which I'm grateful for, they pay my salary. This is still work in progress, but if the editors and reviewers are nice, we will go online before Christmas. And by then, we will have a paper introducing the project, a database with all historical perovskite data, a GitHub repository with the code base for the project, descriptions for what's found in the database, templates and instructions for how to upload new data, interactive graphics, and a web page where everything can be accessed. 
And there are a lot of cool things that can be done with our tools. But as my time is limited, I will only show a few examples, but hopefully those can trigger a desire for more. Have you ever wondered what it would look like if you could present all of Perovskite solar cell science in only one figure? One that no more. You have it here, where we have a hex beam plot of the performance as a function of publication date for almost every Perovskite device properly described in the literature. And if you have all data consistently formatted and found in one place, there's a lot of very interesting things you can do. You can, for example, reproduce the record trends in the enrol efficiency chart, as we do here. And with this tool, if you hover over a data point with the mouse, you get more information about that specific device. And if you click on that point, you automatically get redirected to the original source where you can find out more of that specific device, which is quite convenient. But let's say that you aren't primarily interested in the global record, but you are more into, let's say, inverted slots with a piece of BM electrode and a P dot PSS hole conductors. And where you want the perovskite to be deposited by spin coating using the anti solid method, and where you want the substrate to be flexible, you can get that record trend as easy as that. And with one additional button click, you can download that figure and are free to use it in your presentation, in your application, or in your paper. Another typical user example is this. Imagine that you're a new PhD student and you're told that your mission in life is slot alcoated perovskites. Then you can go here and with a simple command, you could filter out all data for all slot alcoated perovskites available. And you can get this data in tabular form and you can download that data, which gives you a good entry point to the key publications that you should look up further. And once you have this data filtered out, you can start to separate it along a long range of different dimensions related to, for example, materials and properties and synthetic procedures. And what we'll show you here is an example of how to separate the data with respect to the solvent system used during the perovskite deposition during slot eye coating. And this is a fairly complex example in the sense that answering the question of how the solvent system affect the perovskite deposition previously is a question that required quite a lot of work to answer. Whereas here, in this system, we can visualize the answer to that question within about a minute, as we see here. Once we have done that, we can start to ask additional questions like, how important is the solvent atmosphere and the, so and the annealing temperature of the perovskite, for example, or a long range of other questions. And we can also start to compare different choices, like here, how important is the choice of electron transport layers or the choice of perovskite compositions. And trust me, you could easily spend hours and hours filtering through the data, trying to make sense of the perovskites, but also trying to figure out what are the experiments that should be done but haven't been done yet. With all data in one place, you can also start to address the question of cell-to-cell, batch-to-batch, and lab-to-lab -lab variation while comparing different parameters, which means that you can start to see trends that otherwise is hard to be conclusive about. And you could, for example, list the most common hole conductors and see how they affect the open circuit voltage on average. Or you can ask, how does the choice of deposition techniques the titanium dioxide electron transport layers affect the performance. Or you can compare how different antisolvents affect the performance. Or you can investigate the trends in scalability, stability, or van gap tunability. All those examples really deserve a talk of their own, but that will be for another time. If you look into the future, in a worst case scenario, we will publish an interesting data set and a nice paper, and then nothing more will happen. That would still be a decent outcome, but I think this could be so much better than that. And in a best case scenario, the perovskite community will embrace this as a valuable resource 
and start to upload the round data in the future and thereby start to build what you can call a Wikipedia of periscope science. And if we succeed in this, we could stay up to date. And when people upload their own data, we can get data for far more devices, not just a few highlighted in papers. And we can also get that data with a more fine-grained data mess. And we can also expand the projects to include data for non-device related parameters, as well as links to the original data sets. If you would like to contribute and upload your own data, you go to the website, you download a template with instructions, you fill in the template, and you submit a file. Simple as that. And by doing that, you give your data a new life with increased visibility. They can draw additional attention to your original publication. And this is also a way to comply with increased demand from funding agencies and journals to make your data openly available. And it's also a service to the Periscope community that could help us all accelerate the pace of discovery, which recently is something you would like to do, even if it takes some effort. And also, by planning to share your data in this way, already from the start of the project, is something that could help you organize and improve your own local data management, and thereby help you in your own research. And with that, I have probably used up my time. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, or if you would like some assistance with how to utilize the resources, or if you would like to discuss how to expand the project and do interesting follow-ups, please send me an email.